in Romans 4.15, the law brings wrath. He does not say that through the law, people merit the forgiveness of sins. For the law always accuses and terrifies consciences. Therefore, it does not justify, since the conscience that is terrified by the law flees the judgment of God. They err, therefore, who trust that they merit the forgiveness of sins through the law, through their own works. Enough has been said for now about the righteousness of reason or after the law, which the opponents teach. Later, when we set forth our position on the righteousness of faith, the subject matter itself will compel us to marshal more testimonies, which will also be useful for refuting those errors of the opponents that we have considered to this point. So, I think we've talked to length about this, of uh, the law brings wrath, and our, it's not by our works. So, we'll continue on. 40. Therefore, people cannot by their own power live according to the law of God. And because all are under sin and guilty of eternal wrath and death, we cannot be set free from sin and be justified through the law. Instead, what has been given to us is the promise of forgiveness of sins and justification on the account of Christ, who was given for us in order to make satisfaction for the sins of the world and who has been appointed as a mediator and propit propitiator. Um, so, right, he is the one that mediates on our behalf before God, and he is the one whose blood has covered our sins in order that we might be made pure before God. That's what propitiator is about, covered with sin, or covered with blood. Um, so he covers us with his blood. This promise is not conditional upon our merit. It's freely offered. And forgiveness of sins and justification, just as Paul says in Romans eleven six. If it is by works, it is no longer on the basis of grace. And elsewhere, he says in Romans 3.21, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed. That is, the forgiveness of sins is offered freely. Reconciliation does not depend upon our merit. But if the forgiveness of sins depends upon our merit and reconciliation were by the law, it would be useless. For since we do not keep the law, it would also fall that the promise of reconciliation would never apply to us. Thus, Paul argues in Romans 4.14, if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, Faith is null and the promise is void. For if the promise requires the law and condition of our merits, it would follow that the promise is useless since we never keep the law. So what is he saying? Uh, he's talking about, so if it was if it was based upon the law, if, if the law, if following the law, just by following the law, um, brought us salvation, um, then there wouldn't be any need for Jesus. Um there wouldn't be any need for faith. Um, and it says that Abraham was merited um, with righteousness because of his faith, not by his works, right? And the all the prophets put their promise in God uh, because they knew that God, not that the promise of the law, but the promise that the Messiah would come that would, that would bring about the fulfillment of the law. And so it's through Christ that the promise is. Is fulfilled and that faith is fulfilled the law does not either fulfill faith or promise uh, and so uh, we can't justify ourselves by either of those things either the law nor by um, um, the law in faith and the law in promise so in verse 43 but since justification takes place through a free promise it follows that we cannot justify ourselves um, otherwise we would why would a promise be needed? And since the promise cannot be grasped in any other way than by faith, the gospel, which is strictly speaking the promise of forgiveness of sins and justification on account of Christ, proclaims the righteousness of faith in Christ, which the law does not teach. Nor is this a righteousness of the law, for the law requires of us our own merit and our own perfection. So yeah, so we we don't have perfect works, and we uh, we don't we're not perfect. So uh, the law can't cover us. But the promise freely offers us that we are oppressed by sin and death, reconciliation on account of Christ, which is received not by works, but by faith alone. This faith does not bring to God trust in our own merit, but only trust in the promise or the mercy promised in Christ. Therefore, it follows that personal faith by which an individual believes that his or her sins are remitted on account of Christ and that God is reconciled and gracious on account of Christ receives the forgiveness of sins and justifies us. Because in repentance, that is, in error, faith consoles and uplifts the heart. It regenerates us and brings the Holy Spirit, that we might then be able to live according to the law of God, namely to love God, truly to fear God, truly to assert that God hears prayers, to obey God in all affliction, and to mortify concubiscence, right? That we, uh, we put to death the things of our flesh. 
Thus, because faith, which freely receives the forgiveness of sins, sets against the wrath of God, Christ is the mediator and the propitiator. It does not offer up our merit or our love. This faith is a true knowledge of Christ. It uses the benefits of Christ. It renews hearts and it precedes our fulfillment of the law. Concerning this faith, not a syllable existing in the teaching of our opponents. Hence, we criticize our opponents for teaching only righteousness of the law and not the righteousness of the gospel, which proclaims the righteousness of faith in Christ. Um, all right, so we'll, we'll stop there. Um, because it goes on to talk about um, a whole bunch of other tenets of the justification of faith. And so um, I think it's important that what this is trying to make clear they're, they're trying to explain that it's through Jesus's promises that he is going to fulfill. It's by the law that he is going to fulfill through his life and death and the faith that he is going, that he has, that he has instilled in us through his Holy Spirit. And that through the working of the Holy Spirit that we are justified, uh, not through our works, but the work of, the, of God, um, that the Holy Spirit brings us that justification through Christ's life, through Christ's faith. And all we have to do is believe in him, repent, and turn away from the things, the bad things, um, that we recognize the law is pointing to Christ and that we, by recognizing our misdeeds, turn towards Christ and are justified um, by our faith and faith alone as Martin Luther taught. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we are not, not uh, we, we, we are not left forsaken, that you, you looked upon us, your people, um, in which the law brought wrath to, and that you in your death, your life, death, and resurrection brought new life, that you brought um, freedom, true freedom, that you freed us from um, our life of bondage to sin. Uh, we couldn't free ourselves. Only you could. And so we thank you for this. We thank you that we might trust in your in faith and in promise. Um, we might continue to adhere to the things of God, that we might be justified through you, O God, and not by our own works, uh, but that we might put our faith in you and that we might find that abundance of life and that we might work it out um, throughout our lives, work out our our uh, our love for God and love for our neighbor, uh, that we might truly um, come to know the peace that passes all understanding, the grace that is afforded us through you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today.